Mitty Grossman, thank you for continuing uh, the conversation for Fort Knox. Your background is fascinating to me on multiple levels. Uh, working in the menswear industry for a long time, moving to Polo, Ralph Lauren, moving to Nike, HSN, now WW. I want to go way back to what seems like a critical decision that you made in college mm -hmm. to transfer to George Washington University, right. right? My hometown of Washington, D.C. And then breaking off an engagement, moving to New York all of a sudden at the end, not, not finishing college. What was going through your head and what was the change that you decided to make? Yeah, you know, it was really interesting because that was a defining moment in my life and probably why risk taking has never scared me since. <laughs> um, but there's a difference between risk and suicide, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I was an adopted kid. I always felt that I'd been given this gift and I had to give it back. So. I was told I could do anything I wanted to do, and I said, okay, I am going to do this. I'm going to pursue a path. I, well, I finished high school at 16, started college, uh, was planning to be a lawyer, got engaged to 19 to my childhood sweetheart, and uh, was in my last semester, senior year of college in D.C., and had this epiphany that, you know, this really wasn't the path, that there was something else I wanted to do um, and I needed to figure it out. And it was something that had to be more creative um, and that I was ready to make a change. So imagine I made a phone call to my parents and said, I have something to tell you. I'm breaking my engagement. I'm not getting married. I'm not going to law school in the fall. And I'm leaving school right now and I'm moving to New York. <laughs> and that's what I did. And what did um, they say? You know, there was silence on the other end of the phone. But, uh, you know, I was a pretty independent person and I was you know, supporting myself, and they said, I'm going to support you, and mm. moved to New York in 1977, so um, been here a long time. New York wasn't easy in 1977. It was very different. It was very different. It <laughs> Times was Square wasn't like this. Free Giuliani, you know? Yeah, Jiminy Cricket uh, was exactly. uh, having but, a hard... you know, it, it gives you a sense of resilience, and I yeah. think that's something that I have. And mm. it also, you know, risk-taking and boldness are the essence of transformation. So if you look at my career, um, it's been anything but a linear path. Um, Why and, the menswear industry? You know, I had an opportunity. I had a couple of job offers, and mm -hmm. one of them was working for the president of an international division of an integrated portfolio menswear company called Manhattan Industries. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would give me the most diversity uh, as, a, as a first job. And then I ended up staying in menswear. I worked for a designer named Willie Smith in the 80s who was one of the first designers to believe that fashion came from the street up, not couture down. One of the first uh, African-American designers. He was spectacular. And uh, unfortunately, he died of AIDS. Um, and I went to work for Tommy Hilfiger just as he was exploding. Which... Let's, not, let's get, not get too far ahead. <laughs> I, I want to get to that. But what was the goal, right? Because it sounds like you weren't just passionate about menswear. You wanted to learn something. Yeah. So what here's what's that? interesting. So I have, I have three things that are always important to me. Um, am I really passionate about what I'm doing? Is it purposeful? Is it going to take me there? And can I make impact? And I finally realized early on where my greatest strength was. And it was in helping creativity create business success. Huh. Translating and an to idea transformation into... into business success okay. and enabling people to do it. The second thing was How'd I love you motivating out? and building teams because I found that was what really fulfilled me personally. Mm -hmm. And if that was the case, that's what I was going to excel in. What, what was the, the project or the instance where you realized that you were good at that, taking an idea and making a product or a business out of it? So, you know, I would say there were a number of, of times, but if you go a little later, um, when I made the decision to leave Nike, which was an incredible experience, but I was doing, if you can imagine, this crazy commute between New York, Portland, and was out of the country 30% of the time, and I still worship at the altar of Phil Knight. Um, Why? You know, this is a man who truly believes in humanity, culture, um, has vision, but also has accountability. If you've read any of Phil's books, he lives every credo and uh, he was a real mentor to me around um, particularly culture um, and inspiration 
And, you know, when I made the decision to take the role at the time with Barry Diller, the company was owned by IAC, I mean, seriously, John, people thought I was having a midlife crisis. They're like, you're leaving <laughs> Nike to go do this. But you know what? Most people just see what's in front of them. They don't see what could be. And here I saw this incredible media platform in a world where brands were being distribution captive and couldn't tell their stories where technology was enabling everything from video to commerce. I was spending a lot of time in Japan when mobile was booming mm -hmm. and said that if there was a way to take this linear platform and I coined the concept of editorial program commerce. So imagine if you could take Food Network, HGTV, DIY and Style, bring it to life, but people could buy the products. And that's right. what I saw. Um, but when but, I but got there, that's not what it was. Right. It wasn't cool. It was Nike, not. for a long time, has been so cool. Uh, you were definitely the cool kid at the party when they, you, they asked you. And then when I went to, to work initially for HSN, I did go to a cocktail party, and somebody leaned over and goes, you know, I've shopped on Home Shopping Network. I go, why are you whispering? <laughs> and so my goal was to take the whisper out of it. And we relaunched the network as an entertainment uh, commerce platform and uh, really created a whole new digital. We were one of the first e-commerce players to launch an app. Um, we were one of the only people to ever integrate a gaming platform called HSN Arcade right there because mm. we knew and it's no different than what I'm doing today. The more engagement, the more inspiration, and the more community you can create, the greater the impact, whatever that impact is, whatever business that you're in. Um, and that, to me, has always been compelling. I'd say the one difference with um, you know, this role and why I so passionately wanted to do it, you know, I was at a point in my career um, where if I was going to do one more you know, big thing, I said, it has to do two things. Not only do I want to deliver a financial return on equity, mm -hmm. I want to deliver a human return on equity. Hmm. Um, and so to have something that's enabling me to do both, that is very, very powerful. And it goes back to my original credo of transformation. Am I passionate? Is it purposeful? And in this case, will it have real impact? When did you decide to make the leap away from HSN? Was it a thing where you decided, I I've kind of done all that I have to do here, the next thing will present itself? Or did this next thing come along and you said, oh, I guess I have to? No, it's, it's really interesting. Um, you know, we were going to be putting a CEO in. I was potentially transitioning the you know, chairman. But again, I knew I wanted to do one big thing. And of course, what am I, gonna get? What am I getting all the calls for, right? Mm. Go run giant retail operations. Not that that would not have been great, but it wasn't what I felt. And when I saw the opportunity at uh, Weight Watchers at the time, and I started doing my due diligence and looked at this company and started speaking with people. And the thing that struck me more than anything else, no matter who I spoke to, they had a story, hmm. whether it was theirs, their mothers, their grandmothers, their fathers, their sisters. And it was all positive. And then I spoke to people whose lives had truly been transformed. And not one person opened with how much weight they lost. They said, I'm a better person. I'm a better parent. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a better husband. And they walked me through the why. Hmm. And that's when, for me, the light bulb went on. And, you know, after meeting Oprah, certainly, and talking to the rest of the board, um, I felt that this was an opportunity of a lifetime to really create the kind of impact that you can't always make in other businesses. Before we close, I want to go back, what, 20 plus years to one thing you mentioned and one thing you didn't, Tommy Hilfiger and Polo, Polo Jeans. You launched Polo Jeans. Get me into the sense of the anatomy of a hit. At what point do you know that an idea is going to explode? Uh, how many false positives are there? Is that something you learned at Hilfiger? What? Yeah, you know, I was very fortunate. You know, I worked for Tommy for a little over three years. We're still good friends. He's a fantastic guy. But um, before I launched Polo Jeans, I actually went to turn around Chaps Ralph Lauren. Mm. 
mm. um, which was flailing, not doing a lot. And I was able to take it from 25 million to 250 million in three years. Then went and headed up new business development. We actually recreated and created a whole new category of menswear called main floor collections for the stores that weren't able to carry polo. Um, for the stores that had polo, mm. and then for the stores that didn't have polo, we became, Chop Chop Lauren became their polo shops. So we were able to create a whole new footprint across the entire menswear industry. Then I ran new business development for Ralph Lauren, which is when we did the business plan for polo jeans. But to your point about when did you know, we had just come off Double RL not having been as successful as they would have liked it to. Hmm. So now you're launching a whole new jeans company where people are somewhat skeptical. And what we said is we are going to be Americana, we're going to be the roots of what Ralph Lauren is, but we're going to express it in a denim culture and in more of a street, somewhat younger culture. Hmm. And you know, I always say, I remember that first winter, it was when you still needed subway tokens. <laughs> um, and I'm traveling around the city in the snow, finding the real estate, hiring the people. And they said, I, I know what it's like to do a startup, but fortunately, it was someone else's money to a degree. <laughs> um, Even when it's a startup startup, it's often it's somebody hard. else's money. It's, yeah. I have such respect. It's yeah. really hard. But... The part that's so rewarding is you're building the team from the beginning. You're building the concepts. You're building. You're not unwinding, you know, things. Um, and, you know, we launched and it took off because we struck a chord with people. We were affordable, but we were aspirational. Mm. And there's a consistency of all the brands I've ever worked for. They're accessible, but aspirational. Nike's another great example of that. Right. And we were able to take the business from zero to close to 500 million, and then it got acquired by Jones New York. Um, but it was, it was an incredible moment, and I'm still close. You know, when I look at how many of the people that came out of there are now running other big businesses, the same out of, you know, Nike, et cetera. Um, but they're all businesses, and I believe that every business that I have ever built I've built it on culture. Hmm. I've built it on an aligned vision, an engaged culture, people who are passionate and want to collaborate and together create something that's going to have an impact. Well, I look forward to seeing what you continue to do with WW. Mindy Grossman, thanks for sitting down for Thank Fort Knox. Thank you for that.